So here is the Mate 10, Huawei's latest flagship phone, or in this case, sister flagship phone, that although it may seem shadowed by the Mate 10 Pro, it does have some key differences that may, at least for me personally, make it a better option. And we will quickly get those differences out of the way with. First, it has expandable micro SD storage, and it has a headphone jack. This is the big one for me. I don't want to carry around any storage. I don't want to carry around any extra USB adapters in my headphones. They're all 3.5 mil jacks. And I want to utilize that awesome onboard DAC that comes on the Mate 10. And talking about the audio figures, here they are, quite impressive. This is one of the key differences that not many talk about, but makes a Huawei flagship quality. Low crosstalk and great ampage and practically no base frequency roll off at all. Though further differences between this and the Pro model is that this has an IPS 2K 16x9 screen versus the Pro's 1080p 18x9 or 2 to 1 OLED screen. And also the Pro is water dunk proof versus the Mate 10 only being splash resistant. The Pro also has 6GB of RAM versus 4GB of RAM and 128GB of onboard storage versus 64GB of onboard storage with the Mate 10 non-Pro. However, boring stuff aside, let's talk about what makes this phone an absolute winner. 4000 mAh battery lasts a long time. I got two and a half days of normal usage out of this thing. First my P9, which usually only goes for a day and a half at best. Not only that, it charges up in an impressive one hour and 20 minutes with the included charger. Hardware-wise, it has a Kirin 970, which is a big leap over the previous Kirin 960 with an eight-core CPU and a dedicated neural processing unit, which Huawei calls the MPU, which helps process things like facial recognition imaging and cloud AI syncing. It is a great addition that only has just been released to the smartphones this year. The Mali G72 12-core GPU also helps give out a great gaming experience, with it winning the GFX benchmark and also scoring right around other Android flagships in Geekbench. The Huawei phones themselves also incorporate smart machine learning, and this is something that has impressed me over the years using Huawei phones. They never seem to slow down. And now after reading through the fine print, I've realized that it is this exact algorithm that keeps your everyday tasks indexed and your files that you never seem to open anymore tucked away, allowing the phone to remain fast and snappy. Though comparing it spec-wise to other phones out there, it has similar resolution and RAM as the Galaxy S8 Plus as well as the LG V30, yet comes in quite a bit less for the money. Though the OnePlus 5 is still undercutting all the phones mentioned here for the raw specs for the money. Build quality wise, you get an all metal frame surrounded by reinforced glass measuring it at 150 mil long by 78 millimeters wide by 8.2 millimeters thick. The build quality is phenomenal, though you will fingerprint this thing quite easily. The Mate 10 also includes a pre-attached screen protector and a rubbery carry case. Other accessories include earbuds, which include a mic, and it's surprisingly really good, though of course not anything near your audiophile headphone level. Though how about the screen itself? Well, it is an IPS panel with a 60 hertz refresh rate and has three resolution settings, 720p, 1080p, and 2K. I honestly couldn't tell the difference between the 1080p and 2K setting, though 720p did feel slightly pixelated. Though whatever the reason, the 1080p setting must be being upscaled to 2K, and this setting will enable you to have more battery life and more frames on heavy demanding games, for example, than the higher 2K native resolution setting. The one thing I love about the screen itself is that 16 by nine ratio. Most smartphones carry the 18 by nine ratio, so watching movies on this phone was a really pleasant experience. Now onto probably the biggest talking point of this phone, the camera, or should I say cameras. It has two rear cameras, one with 12 megapixels RGB sensor and another with 20 megapixels monochrome sensor. One provides image stabilization and the other provides more detail and clarity at nighttime. The F value stops down to F1.6 and it is quite simply exceptional to shoot with this camera. The Fox bokeh type effect really shines out thanks to the dual cameras and the settings are very easy to navigate with easy options to choose from or the ability to enter the pro mode where you can gain manual control to get the shot you need. Though this pro mode doesn't extend to video, which I'd like to see in a future update and video shooting supporting goes all the way up to 4K 30fps or 1080p 60fps. Though after 1080p 30fps, you do lose inbuilt image stabilization, though there is still optical image stabilization available on all modes. Another big plus is that the inbuilt image stabilization does work quite well, and surprisingly, the nighttime video shooting is really good too, beating that of my 4K vlog camera, which costs a similar price, but of course, the vlog camera does have a better autofocus and does have 25x optical zoom. The front-facing camera, aka selfie camera, with an 8 megapixel sensor and an f2.0 stopping value it also has the beauty filter on by default, something I turn off 
so you can see my wrinkles coming through in all their glory. Though, of course, the last part to touch on with the cameras themselves is the extremely close focus distance for macro shooting. I measured around seven centimeters of distance, which is extremely good for getting the macro shot you want if you need to. Digital zoom expands this to two times as well with what Huawei promises is at the expense of no loss in quality. You can be the judge of that and the links will be in the description below. And onto another highlight of this phone, the user interface and the ease of use. The Mate 10 comes pre-installed with the latest Android update, nicknamed Oreo, and it looks absolutely gorgeous in my opinion. With the EMUI overlay imposed by Huawei, some may think it's a little bit too much, especially Android barebone users, though for me personally it is what makes the Huawei phone one that is just so damn good. For instance, all the apps that I need to use quite simply work, Google Maps never cuts out on me, something that can't be said for the Xiaomi phone that I had come through here, and the Mate 10 goes behind the code to ask me things like if I want to resize photos before I email them. And this is extremely convenient if I'm taking snaps for Gumtree and I need to downsize on the fly. Also, scrolling around and accessing features is just a blast. I never have any programs crashing on me, nor do I have any tech slowdowns, something that has happened on previous phones before I started using Huawei, and hence why I have continued to use their phones over the last few years, starting with the Ascend G6, then the P9, and now the Mate 10. Though funny enough, my reason for staying on the Huawei line, despite this phone being sent in as a sample for review, is one that could be described as a pleasant surprise. I bought the G6 SIM free over two years ago when it was priced at about 150 USD. And at that price, I really just expected something that could post a few tweets, take some phone calls, and maybe snap some potato photos for Instagram. But what I got was so much more. Something that was really damn good, has great onboard audio for listening with headphones, and ultimately it was a phone that punched so hard for the money that you paid. And it was ever since then that I've been a real believer in the Huawei lineup of phones. Things just work, they don't slow down, and they work exceptionally well. Great for someone looking for value for money. My P9 has also been dropped so many times that I am now on the second crack screen, but it still keeps going and has no signs of slowing down. So it doesn't surprise me to see that Huawei is now outselling Apple in 2017 and only has Samsung to go to get to the number one spot. Lastly, the Mate 10 also has dual SIM support with the option to select data from one SIM and use the line from the other. Great for international traveling where international data rates on only one SIM would otherwise ruin you completely or not being able to take a call while using local data SIM could also ruin you as well. The phone itself can connect up to any computer via the USB-C to standard USB-A cable which comes included and doesn't, thank the heavens, need any sync software to be pre-installed. You can simply drag and drop files in and out of the box. You can even watch .mkv movie files and listen to .flac files without installing any additional apps. So the Mate 10 here has practically everything I could ask for in a smartphone and priced at $880 Australian, or at least that's what the guy at JB Hi-Fi said he could do it for me. It was quite well priced for Aussies. As for folks in the UK, it is rumored to be released soon for around about 700 pounds. And if you're in the United States, then I believe CES, they may be having an official launch date in America, though nothing's really known yet in terms of pricing. Though ultimately for the price Huawei is asking, it does carry a metal frame, Oreo update, dual SIM, headphone jack, micro SD slot, 2K resolution support on 60 FPS, 2K screen, 16 by nine ratio, 4,000 mAh battery, super quick charge time of one hour and 20 minutes, eight core CPU, 12 core GPU, and a neural processor chip built in. And damn, after all that, I have myself a new favorite smartphone here on my hands. And keep in mind, I'd love to see this smartphone with an OLED display. That would be about my only critique personally, though in the Mate 10's defense, it does come in cheaper than the competitor's flagship phones. And although it is splash resistant, it is and water dunk proof. If you need weatherproofing, you might want to take a look at some other phones or the Mate 10 Pro. And lastly, I believe it doesn't support wireless charging too. Though besides that, an exceptional phone. And yes, I am gonna say this review will incorporate some personal bias, but that's something that comes with having a flawless experience for the last few years and then being thrown to the high end after having been so satisfied with the mid and low end products. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below, have you tried Huawei before? If so, are you a believer? If not, why not? Love reading your comments as always, and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.